get there, Setner, and it, I can walk you over there if you want me to. If you don't know how to get there, come. Okay.
this way. You're right on this side over here.
it's great to see everybody at this very unique fall faculty and friends convocation. And fortunately it's, fortunately, it's nice and cool out here instead of being too hot this afternoon. I'm Dr. Lynn Cleary, Vice President for Academic Affairs. The fall faculty convocation traditionally marks the beginning of each academic year at Upstate Medical University. And we're happy to be able to celebrate this, this very unique academic year with you in person. Convocation serves to honor those individuals who have made outstanding contributions to our campus and our community. Our procession today includes Carrie Green Donnelly, Assistant Professor, College of Health Professions, Medical Imaging Sciences, Vice Chair of the Faculty Council. Dr. Mantash Dewan, Interim President of Upstate Medical University and SUNY Distinguished Service Professor. Dr. Ann Botash, Senior Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs and Faculty Development and SUNY Distinguished Teaching Professor. Ms. Eileen Pezzi, Vice President for Development. Dr. Tammy Austin Ketch, Dean of the College of Nursing. Dr. Katherine Beisner, Dean of the College of Health Professions. Dr. Rajesh Dave, Dean of the Binghamton Campus. Dr. Mark Schmidt, Dean of the College of Graduate Studies. Dr. Mark, D Dr. David Amberg, Vice President for Research. Dr. Lawrence Chin, Dean of the College of Medicine and Dr. Daryl Dykes, Chief Diversity Officer and Assistant Professor of Orthopedic Surgery, as well as Dr. Mr. James Sparks, Interim Chair of the Upstate Medical University Council. For this afternoon's ceremony, we're going to ask that there be no handshakes for obvious reasons and that you keep your mask on when you come up for your uh, photograph. It'll be a very unique entry into your into your albums. <laughs> um, Carrie Green Donnelly, will you please come forward to open our 2020 thousand, thousand fall faculty convocation ceremony. Good afternoon. President Dewan, in turn council chair, <clears throat> Mr. Sparks, award recipients and honored guests. I am pleased to open the ceremony for the 2020 Fall Faculty Convocation. It is my honor to present Dr. Mantash Dewan, Interim President of the State University of New York, Upstate Medical University. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to this special occasion in this beautiful new setting. It's a brand new world. We are trying this for the first time, and I'm so happy to see so many of you here. This is truly a proud and transformational moment in Upstate's history. COVID has taught us many things, but the most important is it proved how spectacular the 11,000 people at Upstate truly are. It showcased the depth and breadth of its expertise and made us believe that we can achieve anything. It really did take a pandemic to bring out the very best in us. It has changed us forever, for the better. We are simultaneously dealing directly with the scourge of systemic racism. Long before George Floyd, we had challenged ourselves to make measurable, meaningful change. This is the charge to our new and amazing Chief Diversity Officer, Dr. Darrell Dykes, who has an MD, PhD, and a JD. I think he's gonna have to live up to those. But we know that it can be done. Last year, the College of Medicine had 11% of its students from the underrepresented group. This year, with definite effort from Dean White and Dean Welch, it's gone from 11% last year to 23% this year. We know we can make a difference. We are grateful also for the strong and generous support of the community. The governor came twice, the chancellor visited Upstate on his second day. He applauded Upstate's excellence on CNN, I think that's a first, and wore an Upstate strong mask on another 
national TV show. Last Friday, in his press conference, the mayor called Upstate a gem. Who am I to disagree with him? And yesterday, the State University of New York Board of Trustees passed a formal resolution applauding the work Upstate has and is doing in terms of testing all 64 campuses for COVID using our new saliva pooled testing methodology and wastewater testing methodology. But we are most grateful to the generosity of hundreds from our community who over these very difficult months have brought us food and masks and money and a great deal of encouragement. Thank you all, it has been invaluable. And today, there is a special need to honor the amazing work that was done despite these difficult circumstances. We felt strongly that it had to be in person and not on Zoom, which is why we're here. Overall, our students in all four colleges were educated safely and almost all of them graduated on time. The faculty is busy redesigning curricula and also are working on offering new degree programs very soon. In research, our expenditures, despite the labs being closed, were just a shade above last year. And this year, we are almost $6 million ahead. So we're looking forward to good things there, including Upstate getting its first U01 award. It's a $7 million award to Dr. Andres Poe. The hospital did shut down and drop to 50% in March and bled $1 million each day. However, we did receive about $34 million from the federal government, which makes up partially for this deficit. Although it is going to be difficult, we will manage this deficit by doing two things. First, as you would expect, uh, to become a little bit more careful about recruitment. However, we are very pleased that no one was laid off, no one was furloughed, no salaries were cut. More importantly, we are going to grow out of this problem by basically becoming more efficient and growing more profitable programs. I am confident that we can do that. Whether we look at education, research, or clinical care, I guarantee you that next year will be a banner year. I am confident because we have all the necessary ingredients. We have unprecedented support from the community, both from the members at large here and from our council. Thank you, Chairman Sparks, for being here today. We have absolutely the very best leadership we've had in a long, long time. Thank you to our terrific CEO, Dr. Robert. I do not see him. I guess he's working, Dr. Robert Corona. To our deans, all exceptional, I'm gonna go in alphabetical order, Dean Austin Ketch, Dean Beisner, Dean Shin, Dean Dave, Dean Schmidt, Dean White, and Vice President, Dr. Cleary. Thank you all, you have been exceptional through this entire process. And mostly, our fabulous faculty and staff, some of whom we will honor today. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the 11,000 amazing people who work at Upstate. You can clearly see we have reason to be optimistic. Thank you all for being here to celebrate the very best of Upstate. Thank you for being here. I'm very pleased to begin the presentation awards Kerry Green Donnelly will assist with the distribution of certificates and medallions. Can you please take your place? We will begin with the Academy of Upstate Educators. The Academy, which was established eight years ago, was created with two primary goals. 
to provide recognition to a group of innovative and excellent educators who demonstrate the significant commitment to education that is a core part of our mission, and to provide a resource to faculty colleagues and administrative leaders as they address education-related issues. Members of the Academy are individuals who have consistently demonstrated excellence in educational activities. Dr. Botash, will you please come forward and present this year's members of the Academy of Upstate Educators. Thank you. I'm pleased to present the following two new members of this year's Academy of Upstate Educators, Dr. Amy Caruso-Brown and Dr. Heidi Marzouk. Dr. Caruso-Brown has distinguished herself as a creative clinical educator, exceptional mentor, and extraordinary physician. She's deeply passionate about the educational well-being of her students inside and outside of the classroom. Dr. Brown believes that true scholarship is only realized through advocacy. As a medical educator, she helps develop lifelong learners who are capable of fulfilling their ethical and professional obligations to provide just, compassionate, evidence-based health care to patients and families from diverse backgrounds. Since 2014, Dr. Caruso Brown has been a preceptor in the clinical bioethics clerkship she has been the instructor in physician and social responsibility courses and is currently the co-director of Patients to Populations, a first year medical student course that successfully integrates bioethics and health law content with public health. She has brought a diverse wealth of experience to class discussions, which creates an enriching and thought provoking environment. Her students who comprise various ethnicities, nationalities, ages, genders, sexual orientation, and religions have developed a sense of unity that is palpable. Dr. Caruso Brown, please come forward to receive your certificate. And now our second Academy of Educators person, Dr. Marzouk, joined Upstate in 2015, and she has demonstrated she has demonstrated dedication to teaching, extraordinary service, and abounding enthusiasm. She has been an active educator of students, residents, and the community. She is unique at Upstate. She holds a subspecialty of otolaryngology. Uh, knew I was going to trip up on that otolaryngologic allergy within the field of otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. Dr. Marzouk is an advocate of self-propelled and active learning. Her goal as an educator is to create lifelong learners, innovators, and critical thinkers. On her journey to achieve this goal, she ignites her students' passion to practice compassionate medicine. She sets them up for success through the, process, through the learning process to self-evolve and become practice-based practitioners. She brings their knowledge base and critical thinking to the next level by becoming innovators themselves, moving the legacy of the profession forward. She never turns away anything asked of her. She mentors residents and students interested in otolaryngology, helping them with critical thinking and clinical judgment, along with communication skills. Dr. Marzouk, please come forward to receive your certificate. We will now present the President's Awards for Philanthropic Service. These awards are given to recognize contributions by way of char charitable act or gift of time and talent to Upstate Medical University. Ms. Pezzi, will you please come forward to, to read the citations for these awards? Thank you. I am pleased to cite Sutton Real Estate as corporate recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Philanthropic Service. Sutton Real Estate has been a dedicated and constant corporate partner to Upstate Medical University for more than three decades, 
with gifts made through the Upstate Foundation of counting to 300,000 just for gala and another 300,000 totaling in $600,000. The company's giving history, which began in 1986, includes its most recent naming gift in support of the Galasano Center for Special Needs, the foundation's current campaign to assist children with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families. The foundation knew it could count on Sutton when it conducted its previous two capital campaigns to build the Upstate Galasano Children's Hospital and the Upstate Cancer Center. Sutton has also supported Upstate's annual gala since 1992 and has been involved in other foundation events including the Upstate Open, Children's Miracle Network Open, and the Central New York Region Skins Game. Through the years, Sutton has also contributed to many diverse causes such as poison control, breast care, and orthopedic surgery. Mr. Louis Fournier will receive the award on behalf of Sutton Real Estate. Mr. Fournier, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Philanthropic Service. Ready? I am pleased to present Mr. Richard Cody, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Philanthropic Service. Mr. Cody's supported support of the Upstate Foundation started in 2001 when his young daughter Madeline was treated in the Pediatric Emergency Department. Mr. Cody was so impressed by and grateful for her care at the time and during subsequent years that he has made support of pediatric services at Upstate University Hospital his personal mission. His first involvement in fundraising was in the Foundation's Little Gift for Life annual dinner and auction supporting pediatric cancer patients. Inspired to do more, Mr. Cody capitalized on his passion and experience as a triathlete, asking friends, neighbors, and other members of his network to support his triathlon endeavors with gifts to the Children's Hospital Capital Campaign. Next, Mr. Cody and his wife, Lisa, established the Madeline Cody Endowment in 2007 to benefit the Center for Development, Behavior, and Genetics at Upstate. All told, Mr. Cody has worked with the foundation to raise, directly, donate, or secure matching gifts from his company totaling more than $150,000. Mr. Cody isn't able to join us today, but I believe he's watching, so thanks Rick and Lisa too. We will now present the award. Yeah, let's clap. He can hear it. <laughs> we will now present the award recipient for the President's Award for Distinguished Service, Dr. Dewan. Will you please come forward to present this award? I'm pleased to present Dr. Robert Dracker, recipient of the President's Award for Distinguished Service. Dr. Dracker is a practicing community pediatrician who has maintained a strong connection with Upstate Medical University throughout his career. Before founding Summerwood Pediatrics and Infuser Care Medical Services in 1993, Dr. Dracker served as medical director of the Transfusion Medicine Service at University Hospital. He has also supported the pediatrics training program to ensure the success of tomorrow's pediatricians. He was chief of service for pediatrics at Upstate Community until 2017. He regularly accepts medical students doing pediatric clerkships into his practice and participates in interviews for Upstate Medical School applicants. An ardent Upstate benefactor, he has hosted the pediatric residents at their annual holiday party while his colleague covered hospital services to allow in-house pediatrics residents to attend the event. In addition, he made the conference room conversion into a pediatric resident workspace into a reality through his financial and persistent backing. An honors graduate of SUNY Health Science Center, he is currently the president of the College of Medicine's Alumni Foundation. Dr. Dracker was nominated by Dr. Gregory Connors. Dr. Dracker, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Distinguished Service.
We will now present the President's Awards for Outstanding Voluntary Faculty Service. These awards are given to recognize the outstanding voluntary contributions from our faculty to the Upstate Medical University community. I will present the award recipient for the College of Nursing. I am pleased to present Ms. Catherine Cunningham, recipient of the President's Award for Outstanding Voluntary Faculty Service. Ms. Cunningham has demonstrated exemplary volunteer service and serves as an outstanding example of clinical collaboration in support of students, providers, and the community. In 2005, she started her career at our own Golisano Children's Hospital as a registered nurse in the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. She currently serves as a nurse practitioner in the highly specialized field of pediatric cardiology and has also worked in, P in the Pediatric Neurology Clinic. Since graduation from the Upstate College of Nursing, Ms. Cunningham has been of exceptional service as a voluntary and uncompensated preceptor for nurse practitioner students in both the pediatric nurse practitioner and family nurse practitioner tracks. In each of the years since her graduation from the program, Ms. Cunningham has taken the time to work with students in a variety of capacities, sharing hundreds of hours of her talent and knowledge in an extremely busy and highly specialized area of practice which students find extremely valuable in both their academic and clinical preparation. Ms. Cunningham was nominated by the College of Nursing. Ms. Cunningham, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Outstanding Voluntary Faculty Service. Dean Beisner, will you please come forward to present the award recipient of the President's Award for Outstanding Voluntary Faculty Service for the College of Health Professions. Good afternoon. I am pleased to present Ms. Joanna Doucher, recipient of the President's Award for Outstanding Voluntary Faculty Service. Ms. Doucher has worked her entire career at Syracuse Veterans Administration Medical Center and has consistently devoted her expertise to our students at University Hospital. Currently, current students and faculty unanimously rate her a clear leader for this distinction. A 1985 alumna of our radiologic technologist program, she took on the official role working with our students in 1992 and moved into the lead clinical instructor world uh, role in early 2000. She interfaces with all medical imaging science students at the VA Medical Center as she coordinates parts of the clearance process and is an integral part of the radiography clinical education component. She creates a warm, friendly environment for students and staff. Students receive support and guidance that benefits them both in the technical skills required of the profession and also in interpersonal skills so needed in a healthcare provider today. Ms. Doucher was nominated by Carrie Green Donnelly. Ms. Doucher, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Outstanding Faculty Service. Dr. Dave, would you please come forward to present the award recipient for the President's Award for Outstanding Voluntary Faculty Service for the Binghamton Campus. Thank you, Dr. Beisner. Dr. Devan, it's with great pleasure uh, that I present Dr. Jody Howell recipient of the President's Award for Outstanding Voluntary Faculty Service. Dr. Howell joined the faculty as an assistant professor. Before that, she had worked as a clinical instructor and she was a student at Binghamton campus. 
And you know how you see people grow up in their role? It has been phenomenally satisfying to see her as a student, as a preliminary resident, and come back to the community practicing anesthesia and teach medical students. She has been clearly outstanding in her role as a leader, uh, teaching people, and has been teaching conscientiousness to the students, balancing work and personal lives, teaching them uh, the role of women in medicine, and being a mentor for the women professionals of her time. So at this point, uh, Dr. Howell was nominated by the entire campus, and I'd like to have Dr. Howell come forward to receive the President's Award for the Voluntary Faculty Service. Congratulations. We will now present the President's Awards for Excellence in Teaching. These awards are given to recognize the outstanding teaching contributions of our faculty to the Upstate University community. Dr. Schmidt, would you come forward, please, to present the awards? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dave. I am pleased to present Vladimir Sorotkin, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Dr. Sorotkin has shown a commitment to providing innovation and robust instruction to our medical and graduate students. He demonstrates a willingness to look beyond accepted paradigms for how a particular course is taught. He has repeatedly developed improvements to engage students in the process of active learning. Dr. Sorotkin, presents well-constructed and informative lectures and labs in the microscopic anatomy thread of the first-year medical student curriculum. He offers clear presentations, notes, and a willingness to help out in the laboratory. He has consistently included excellent clinical correlations in his lectures, and it is apparent that he enjoys interacting with students because he is always eager to take on a fair share of student presentations. He uses a teaching methodology that incorporates real-life examples related to the course material. Knowledge, knowledgeable, inquisitive, and enthusiastic, Dr. Sorotkin has always actively contributed questions during the Cytoskeletal Journal Club and Basement Joint Lab meetings. He engenders a passion for science in his students. Dr. Sorotkin was nominated by his department chair, Dr. Joseph Sanger. Dr. Sorotkin, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Dr. Austin Ketch, will you please come forward to present the award recipient for the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching for the College of Nursing. Thank you, Dr. Schmidt. I'm pleased to present Dr. Katherine Holliday, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Dr. Holliday's passion for her students' success, commitment to Upstate, and her important role of educator in the ever-changing landscape of nursing education are exemplary. Dr. Holliday joined Upstate's faculty in the College of Nursing as an adjunct professor in 2019. In that position, she worked with clinical students in our Master of Science Family Nurse Practitioner Program, providing valuable pediatric expertise, clinical oversight, and instruction in pediatric settings and lectures. During this time, Dr. Holliday was also serving as a faculty member at Krauss Hospital, as well as maintaining an active clinical practice, all while completing her Doctorate of Nursing Practice degree. In 2019, Dr. Holliday was appointed as a full-time assistant professor and director of the Pediatric Nurse Practitioner Program. She has served as lead faculty in all three Pediatric Nurse Practitioner clinical courses 
adjunct faculty in the family nurse practitioner program and is slated to teach additional elective graduate level nursing courses this year. Dr. Holliday's teaching techniques incorporate current evidence-based practice methods that are established and proven to be successful, interprofessional consideration, and a strong understanding of teaching undergraduate and graduate students alike. As a certified nurse educator, she is a true academic committed to educating her patients, students, and the community. Dr. Holliday was nominated by the College of Nursing. Dr. Holliday, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Dr. Dove, will you please come forward to present the award recipient for the President's Award for Excellence in Teaching for the Binghamton campus. Thank you, Dr. Austin Ketch. I'm pleased to present Dr. Dominic Prado recipient of our President's um, Award for Excellence in Teaching. During a 40-year tenure, Dr. Prado has exemplified teaching excellence, provided countless contributions as a researcher, committee member, program site director, administrator, instructor, and mentor. Dr. Prado, has been very active in teaching bioethics, physical examination, especially for clinical skills uh, and communication techniques. He encompasses the true essence of what a teacher should be. In his role as a site director of clinical bioethics, Dr. Prado interacts with the third year students. He believes in teaching bed bedside. He champions the students um, to learn from patients while he guides them how to. These hands-on session guided uh, approaches and with proper technique for examining the different organ systems of the body are very, very classic of his style. Dr. Bredo's leadership role as a course director and a facilitator, facilitator of practice of medicine course and medical director of standardized patient program has been also very significant to the clinical students. And I will add uh, at this point that he's also a great citizen of our community and insisted during the COVID time that everybody followed the rules and took some personal toll on it. And that's a story for another time. He's considered to be an example of collegiality, always cheerful, courteous, respectful, and willing to assist others however he can. He was nominated by the Binghamton campus, and Dr. Prado, would you please come forward and accept the award? Thank you. At this time, I'm pleased to announce the President's Award for Excellence in Basic Research by a young investigator. This award was established to recognize our investigators who had exceptional success in initiating their research. Dr. Amberg, will you please come forward to present this award to the recipient? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dave. Um, President Dewan, I'm walking testimony of the excellence of Upstate. Just yesterday, I had knee surgery, and I have to tell you, Dr. Albanese, you have a great one, and Dr. Scuderi, I have almost no pain today. So, I'm so happy today to present the research awards to two of our most talented researchers and two individuals I'm happy to call friends, one at the beginning of her career and the second at his peak. 
First, I'm pleased to present Dr. Jessica Henty Rodella, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Basic Research by a Young Investigator. Dr. Henty Rodella's career and research is on a rocket trajectory, and I should know as she works in my field of specialization, the regulation, dynamics, and organization of the actin cytoskeleton. Dr. Henty Rodella has rapidly gained an outstanding reputation in the field of cell biology through her novel discoveries. In the short amount of time since starting her independent lab at Upstate, she has made tremendous progress in her research into the mechanisms regulating cytoskeletal dynamics and the cell biological basis of cancer and neurodegenerative diseases such as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS. Her brilliant insights into science attack a high priority medical problem in desperate need of therapeutic intervention. Currently, there are no effective therapies for the devastating consequences of the slow and devastating loss of nervous system function seen in ALS patients. She has also established herself as one of the most talented light microscopists on campus. Dr. Henty Radilla has had extraordinary success in obtaining extramural funding for her innovative research. She has received a Sinsheimer Scholar Award, an ALS Association Starter Grant, an NIH Early Stage Investigator Maximizing Investigators Research Award, totaling more than $2 million. Notably, that award is only given to a select group of promising new investigators who demonstrated research accomplishments. She is also regarded as a wonderful lab citizen mentor and inspiration to graduate students and has trained a host of undergrads, several postdocs, and a technician. And if you've met her, she is a really warm and nice person. Dr. Henty Rodillo was dominated by the Chair of Cell and Developmental Biology, Dr. Joseph Sanger. Dr. Henty Rodillo, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Excellence in Basic Research by a Young Investigator. At this time, I'm pleased to announce the President's Award for Excellence and Leadership in Research. This award is given to recognize the outstanding contributions in research from our faculty to the Upstate Medical University community. I am pleased to present Dr. William Brunken, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence and Leadership in Research. Engaged in leadership and service, Dr. William Brunken has surpassed even the boldest expectations across the SUNY system and the Upstate campus. His significant contributions to Upstate Medical University and to the Center for Vision Research are unparalleled. He has illuminated a significant pathway for vision research funding while personally attaining consistent funding from the National Institutes of Health for more than three decades. In his roles as principal investigator and co-principal investigator, his National Eye Institute funding is projected to exceed 15 million by 2026. Dr. Brunken is dedicated to the success of all Center for Vision Research faculty from junior scientists to senior faculty. He is also available for one-on-one -on -one meetings with students and postdocs, and he carefully mentors them through manuscript revisions and grant submissions. All the members of the Center for Vision Research have benefited from this collaborative spirit. In addition, as an incomparable mentor, he has helped secure financial support for his colleagues and prestigious career development awards for our junior faculty with an impressive record of success. Bill is one, if not the most effective mentor for research faculty on our campus. Proof of Bill's leadership is evidenced by his pioneering leadership role he played in the SUNY Eye Institute, which brought together hundreds of vision researchers from across our system to work collaboratively on many millions of dollars of grant proposals and many collaborative manuscripts testimony to his selfless dedication to making a difference in his field. Dr. Brunken was nominated by Dr. Peter Calvert. Dr. Brunken, Bill, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Excellence and Leadership in Research. Yeah. 
We will now present the President's Award for Excellence in Professional Service. This award is given to recognize the outstanding professional contributions to the Upstate Medical University community. Dr. Cleary, will you please come forward to present the award recipient? I'm pleased to present Ms. Fran Francine Fisher, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Professional Service. During Ms. Fisher's 45 years of service in the Department of Pharmacology, she has accorded herself with distinction in virtually every aspect of her professional obligation, whether managing the department core research facilities or coordinating the teaching obligations of departmental faculty. Her duties have varied along her storied career at Upstate, and in recent years she has begun, become the ever-present go-to person for coordination of the first and second year medical student curricula. Energetic and motivated, she has stepped forward again and again where there has been a need for leadership and direction in maintaining an optimal learning experience for our preclinical medical students. Her years of dedication and experience in the department have given her a firm understanding of the way things work. She is always looking to make things easier for our students, clinicians, basic science experts, as well as the unit co-directors. Every day she arrives with a smile on her face, ensuring that lecturers have all the things they need. From personal experience, I can say that Francine makes you feel like a queen when you're coming to lecture. <laughs> Ms. Fitcher was nominated by her department chair, Dr. Richard Wojtewicz. Ms. Fitcher, Fisher, would you please come forward to receive the President's Award for Excellence in Professional Service? At this time, I'm pleased to announce the President's Award for Excellence in Faculty Service. This award was established to recognize outstanding contributions made by faculty of the Upstate Medical University community. I'm pleased to present Dr. Stephen Taffet, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Faculty Service. Recognized as a dedicated educator and an expert in his field, Dr. Taffet has been an indispensable resource at Upstate for 35 years in diverse roles encompassing the entire spectrum of education, research, and leadership. He has led a research laboratory, authored 79 peer-reviewed publications, and obtained external funding for more than two decades. Since 1985, he has taught immunology to medical students and has been a core instructor for graduate students. He's currently the co-director of the Responsible Conduct of Science course that is required for all graduate and MD-PhD students. He's one of the national leaders for teaching with an innovative active learning method in immunology. Medical students consistently place Dr. Taffet among our best instructors for his relaxed teaching style, sense of humor, and ability to focus on the most important concepts. His laboratory group is driven by excellence, clarity and thought, and the pursuit of novel discoveries. He provides a rich research environment to discuss ideas, pursue independent work, and learn the power of perseverance. Dr. Taffet was nominated by Dr. Rebecca Greenblatt. Dr. Taffet, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Excellence in Faculty Service. We will now present the President's Award for Excellence in Library Science. 
This award is given to recognize outstanding librarians and to promote excellence in their profession at Upstate Medical University. Dr. Chin, will you please come forward to present the award recipient? I am pleased to present Ms. Heidi Webb, recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Library Science. Ms. Webb has made remarkable contributions to Upstate Medical University, our library, and across all 64 SUNY campuses. Since 2017, she has been an integral part of the Health Science Library team. She has facilitated the rollout of two major library systems, Ex Libris, Alma, and Primo, which required extensive planning, assessment, training, and knowledge of all major library units and their workflows. As a project manager for the SUNY system-wide migration, she upgraded an outdated library management system to a unified platform. Overall, the project required intensive review of complex content with short turnaround times given the number of campuses involved. Ms. Webb has built relationships across clinical, clinical care units, student affairs, and IMT coordinating their respective efforts as she works to resolve issues and improve information discovery workflows. She collaborated closely with our clinical outreach librarians and IMT personnel to learn how nursing and other clinical staff use information in the hospital environment. Ms. Webb resolved complex problems and optimized library resources to enhance patient care. Ms. Webb was nominated by Ms. Kara Howe. Ms. Webb, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Excellence in Library Science. We will now present the President's Award for Advancement of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. This award is given to recognize the outstanding contributions in this area to Upstate Medical University. Dr. Dykes, will you please come forward to present the award recipient? Thank you, Dr. Tin. I'm pleased to present Dr. Amy Caruso Brown this year's recipient of the President's Award for Advancement of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Dr. Caruso Brown has demonstrated consistent strengths in fostering diversity, equity, inclusion, or what you'll come to know that we now call belonging at Upstate, as well as social justice. She has a deep understanding of how the social context of these impact the health of our patients. Her interest and understanding in other cultures and her ability to communicate her own humility have led to her roles at Upstate as an exemplary teacher, researcher, and clinician. Dr. Caruso Brown oversaw the integration of the medical school's first year bioethics, law, and social issues course with a parallel course in public health. Medical students now learn about the complex intersections of ethics, public health, and patient care. She has not only integrated a structure into the medical school curriculum for discussion of ethics, population health, gender identity, disability, bias, racism, social determinants of health, and other important topics, but also she's quietly assembled a group of faculty teachers who are trained in the facilitation of these discussions. She is a valued member of Upstate's Task Force on the Response to Racism and an active member of the National Collaborative for Education to address the social determinants of health. Every day, she puts her ideals into action to take our institution to a better place of greater justice and inclusion. Dr. Caruso Brown was nominated by Dr. Kathy Faber-Langendoen. 
Dr. Caruso Brown, please come forward to receive the President's Award for Advancement of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. We will now present the awards bestowed by the State University of New York. Council member, Mr. Sparks, will you please come forward to read the citations for the Chancellor's Awards? Thank you, Dr. Dykes. <clears throat> I'm pleased to present three recipients for the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Classified Service. They are Ms. Sandra Crowley, Ms. Gail Nolan, and Mr. Ed Edgardo Rios. For more than three decades, Ms. Sandra Crowley has demonstrated outstanding customer service and made a difference in the lives of our patients. She has experienced many changes with her long years of service, and while she has continued to grow and adapt to all of the changes, she has always put our patients first. Ms. Crowley currently works at the Newman Center for Breast, Endocrine, and Plastic Surgery Center as a registration facilitator. She displays kindness, compassion, and empathy for all patients she comes in contact with. Her humor brings levity to serious situations. Patients tend to leave her desk much happier than when they arrived. A very positive and empathetic person, she greets everyone with a big smile. Her warmth encourages patients to disclose their concerns. She often remembers family details once the conversation starts back up again, and patients are eager to share family updates with her. She has a gift for understanding emotions and responding with a kind touch, a hug, or a funny story. Ms. Crowley was nominated by Bridget Dewar. For 34 years, Ms. Sue Henderson Kendrick has worked in professional service at Upstate. She currently is the director of the Office of Graduate Medical Education. She has a very important role with substantial responsibility. Upstate has almost 50 residents, residencies. I'm sorry to interrupt. I think you skipped a page. What? She's in a what different Oh, okay, that was put in the wrong order then. Pardon me, that was in the wrong order. Um, Ms. Crowley, uh, let's see. Ms. Gail Nolan has continually displayed professionalism that puts patients and families immediately at ease, calmness under pressure, and the perfect balance of providing treatment and kindness. A talented nurse at the Water Center for Children's Cancer and Blood Disorders, where she administers chemotherapy to ba uh, babies, <coughs> children, and young people each and every day, she always knows exactly what's needed and when. She provides comfort to little kids, offering special band-aids and other distractions to make difficult situations better. She checks on her patients, offering toys or snacks to make times pass by easier. When juggling several patients at once, she makes each patient feel as though they are number one priority with her focus and attention. In 2018, Ms. Nolan received the Scott Carter Award that is presently annually, presented annually to us upstate pediatric hematology oncology nurses who demonstrate compassion, dedication, knowledge, and commitment to pediatric hematology and oncology nursing. Ms. Nolan was nomina nominated by em Emily Kulkis. Ms. Nolan, please come forward to receive the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Classified Service. Would Ms. Crowley please come, uh, I'm sorry, would Ms. Crowley please come forward to receive her award?
Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Edgardo Rios demonstrates an exemplary commitment to patients and their families through his extraordinary customer service as a senior registrar in patient access services, where he is assigned to work in a variety of registration settings. He is one of the most right, recognized registrars in his department, and patients ask for him by name. Wherever he is working, he is immediately adapted to the patients he is serving. He is consistently friendly, kind, and compassionate, and he has an innate sense of emotional needs of the patients and their families. Mr. Rios brings another asset. He speaks English and Spanish fluently and has stepped forward on numerous occasions to translate. He lives by the motto, patients come first. It comes as no surprise that he is frequently mentioned in patient satisfaction service, surveys as providing a lasting impression for our patients and their families. Mr. Rios was nominated by Katrina Norvell. Mr. Rios, please come forward to receive the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Classified Service. I'm pleased to present Ms. Sue Henderson Kendrick, recipient of the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Professional Service. For 34 years, Ms. Sue Henderson Kendrick has worked <clears throat> in professional service at Upstate. Currently, she is Director of the Office of Graduate Med Medical Education. This is a very important role with substantial responsibility. Upstate has almost 50 residencies and fellowships and close to 700 postgraduate trainees. Ms. Henderson Kendrick is an expert regarding the rules and regulations of various accrediting and regulatory organizations and serves as a mentor to many residency and fellowship program directors and their administrative coordinators in navigating the complex policies and procedures governing graduate medical education. She has developed a thorough understanding of the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education and leads the program accreditation process within our institution. <clears throat> she helps organize and implement the annual institutional review and coordinates and prepares for institutional site visits and the clinical learning environment review visits. She oversees program administration of Upstate's Exchange Visitor Program and, and, and developed and has established uh, processes for foreign medical graduates to assist resi residency programs with visa processing. Ms. Henderson Kendrick goes above and beyond her position by addressing challenges in creative and scholarly ways. Last year, she received the President's Award for Excellence in Professional Service, nominated by Dr. Danielle Katz. Ms. Henderson Kendrick, please come forward to receive the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Professional Service. I'm pleased to present Dr. Stephen Albanese, recipient of the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Faculty Practice, Faculty Service. Dr. Albanese, uh, his career has been characterized by significant service, collaboration, and generosity of his time and expertise. He has consistently demonstrated superior service to Upstate Medical University and to the, to the profession of orthopedic surgery through service in its national organizations, all the while excelling as a pediatric orthopedic surgeon and providing leadership to his department. He has served as chair of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery and residency program director since 2000 and teaches both medical students and orthopedic residents. He is a past chair of the Integrated Practice Plans, Upstate University Medical Associates at Syracuse. <clears throat> Representative of his national service are his past roles as president of the American Board of Orthopedic Surgery, president of the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America, as director on the board of the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education and as chair of that group's Orthopedic Surgery Residence, Residency Review Committee and as director of the board of American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. He has been involved in many other activities in the hospital, the university, and the community. It's very rare to see a leader with such sterling and consistent character who is humble, unassuming, while in, in, incisive and highly effective. This blend of traits makes him an ideal leader. Last year, he received the President's Award for Excellence in Faculty Service, nominated by Dr. Danielle Katz. 
Dr. Albanese, please come forward to receive the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Faculty Service. I'm pleased to present Ms. Sandra Bennis, recipient of the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Known as a fine educator, energetic, experienced clinician, and a teacher of teachers, Ms. Bennis regularly, regularly applies educational principles and techniques to continuously improve the quality of her teaching and her program's curriculum. When Ms. Bannis joined Upstate in 2008 as an associate professor and founding chair in the Department of Physician Assistant Studies, she brought extensive patient care experience to her role as an educator. She has taught in 17 courses in the Physician's Assistant Program, eight of which she developed as new courses. She has also supervised more than 50 master's capstone projects. Using a range of teaching methods, she prepares her students to care for patients in a variety of clinical settings. Her students use high fidelity mannequins and simulated patients as part of the curriculum she has built. Knowing for being generous with her time, she always keeps the door open for students. In addition, she has secured four competitive HRSA grants over the past 10 years, totaling more than $4 million. <clears throat> These grants focused on training physician assistants for rural or primary care in medical, medically underserved communities. Ms. Bannis received the President's Award for Teaching in 2014, nominated by Joan O'Brien. Ms. Bannis, please come forward to receive the Chancellor's Award for excellence in teaching. Now, last and certainly not least, the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Scholarship and Creative Activities. I'm pleased to present Dr. Richard Wojciechowicz, recipient of the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Scholarship and Creative Activities. Dr. Richard Wojciechowicz is appreciated as a leader in research and scholarship by peers and students alike. He is a role model, has an inspirational work ethic, and commitment to mentorship of students as well as faculty, and is widely respected for his integrity and responsibility. For nearly 30 years, Dr. Dr. Wojciechowicz's lab has pioneered studies in examining IP3 <coughs> receptors and their regulation. In addition, he has continuously helped to spread technologies and reagents developed in his lab and provide, and provide troubleshooting to other labs. Maintaining an active and vibrant research lab, he received his first NIH grant within a year of joining the upstate faculty as con and has continued to be funded by NIH with total direct cost of more than four and a half million dollars. He has also received several grants from the American Heart Association, the Carol Baldwin Breast Cancer Research Fund, and the National Ataxia Foundation. In addition to being a productive scholar, Dr. Wojciechowicz is a highly effective research mentor for graduate students and postdocs. His graduates are each noteworthy for the quality of work that they did in his lab and for their subsequent success. Dr. Wojciechowicz is nominated by Dr. Mark Drs. Mark Schmidt and Patricia Kane. Dr. Wojciechowicz, please come forward to receive the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Scholarship and Creative Activities. To all the award winners, I just want to say very directly, you are the reason I am so grateful and proud to be at Upstate. Thank you all for everything you do. Let us show our appreciation and praise for them with one more rousing round of applause.
Well done. Thank you very much. This, con this concludes our unique and all the more special fall uh, convocation. We ask that awardees remain seated, and at this time I will ask Carrie Green Donnelly to come forward to pick up the mace and lead the procession as they retreat from the courtyard. The awardees guests, and thank you all for being kind enough to be in the Wise Cotton Auditorium separate. I'm glad you could join us today. Um, the guests are now free to exit the Medical Alumni Auditorium and leave through the main door of Weiss Cotton Hall to unite with the awardees, unless you have made arrangements to meet elsewhere. We ask that you continue to wear your masks and maintain proper distancing as you leave Weiss Cotton Hall and the courtyard. Thank you and congratulations again to everyone who's received an award. <laughs>